Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. Hi, everybody. We are here to talk Sister Wives, Season 19, Episode 2, Girl. also known as The Coins Episode, mm. for which I am very excited. We love The Coins. There talk. was a lot of information. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm going to remember it all, but I'm going to try to because I got so excited, Beatrice. Me too. Before we get into it, we do want to remind you to please hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast we say bad words we have stupid opinions that you might not agree with and that's okay get over it but if you're sensitive you might want to find yourself another dumpster baby but if you're ready to party and talk about some mormonism and Mm. some coins welcome to this dumpster and if you are ready to party with us be sure to follow us on instagram at reality tv cringe and join us on patreon patreon.com slash reality tv cringe we're starting our recaps of smothered here yes, soon in october girl lots of good stuff yeah. coming down the pike join us there mm-hmm. and if you are watching on youtube please do not forget to like and comment and share and subscribe because everything you do helps us to grow and it's slow going good oh my god but at least we're not not growing i guess, I guess. when are we gonna get to four thousand? <laughs> why aren't we at fifty thousand? we are know. so rad girl. we're funny we're beautiful we also were intelligent we're we intelligent. have intelligent takes they're yeah. not always right okay maybe we're a little <laughs> stupid but i feel like we're offering good content yeah, what the hell's great. going on youtube there's always a shadow ban uh-huh there's always some kind of an algorithm problem yeah and i'm sick of it me too okay I understand we had a fellow raccoon who called in on the speak pipe. Honey, and by the way, if you want to call in and sound off and give us your opinion about Cody Brown and Robin Brown and everything else under the sun, all you have to do is go to speakpipe.com slash reality TV cringe. You have up until 90 seconds, 90 seconds. It's Mm -hmm. absolutely free. Yeah. And we love to hear from you. We do love to hear from you. So who called in? We have Raccoon Bronwyn. Oh. And she's got a comment about, I think, Cody Brown. Okay. Hey there, Raccoon Queens. This is Bronwyn. Hey, I had some thoughts I wanted to share with you. Um, I am completely convinced that this is the last season for Sister Wives. Um, Here's why. So they've been two years behind, and you guys talked about that earlier. And now all of a sudden, because of Garrison, they're going to have to bring it up to current day and they've already talked about in the press release that they are going to be discussing garrison's death at some point so they're bringing it up to current day and then what are they going to do they're all over the country and the everything is changing um they're not going to have enough content i don't think after this plus that could be why janelle moved and how cody and robin are selling the house all of this stuff, I'm just really convinced that this is it. So curious to hear your thoughts. But um, yeah, I mean, nothing that I've heard takes me away from that conclusion. It really sounds like that's what's happening. So yep, they're gonna have to find other jobs. Love it. Have a great day, guys. Bye. (laughs) I do love that. I do love it too. well. Well, what are your thoughts? What do you think? I mean, I feel like we're at a crossroads like I feel like we could just cancel the show right now because it's not really sister wives anymore it's Cody and Robin and then the OG3 which everybody I think would want to see a spinoff of the OG3 like I would want to see what Janelle's doing in her life and all that kind of stuff but I could see a world where it gets canceled but I feel like it won't I feel like they're gonna keep going at least to season 20 Yeah, I think that this being the highest rated show on TLC, Mm -hmm. this production company and this family, well, in particular, Cody Brown is very interested in keeping the show going. Mm -hmm. They might have to get creative. They might have to rethink how they want to show us this family, whether we're going to go to North Carolina with Taeda Farms and Janelle and Maddie and Caleb, whether we're going to spend more time with Christine. Um, and then there's Mary and her haunted B&B. 
I mean, I just don't know if there's enough there, though, to make a compelling show. What makes Sister Wives compelling is the underlying family dynamics, which now mm-hmm. in the last few seasons have come to the surface. And so it's full on drama. Yeah. And we've been waiting for it. And right. that's what makes it good, which is why I was saying last week that I think Cody really is invested in portraying a villain, whether he feels that way or not. I feel like he thinks he needs to do that in order to keep this on the television. Yeah. So I think they're going to really want to try and create some additional seasons. I just don't know what we're going to do. And furthermore, if I may, they're going to do what they did with Christine's wedding last year. Yes. They're going to fast forward us to an event that happens in a current timeline. And then in the next consecutive season, they're going to go right back to two years ago. Of course. They don't give a shit. Yeah. This is how they do it. Yeah. And I think that's why the show goes on because they do backlog their content because they don't really have a lot going on in general. Like even season 17, it's like the biggest thing was Christine leaving, right? But like prior to that, what were we watching? Like nothing really. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were watching Cody and Robin be Cody and Robin and then the OG three, you know, going to like a picnic or like something dumb like that. So yeah, I feel like they're going to either have to manufacture content or continue giving us old shit just to keep the show running. Because Cody and Robin do need a paycheck. They do Mm -hmm. need a job. Yes. So I feel like they're going to want the show to continue. Yeah, but the only reason you've got the ratings you have right now is because the wives and the kids have left you. That's really the only reason because previous to that, like you said, it was boring. Although I think a lot of us watched because... Uh, in some ways it was interesting to see this family try to function and and be together and and that was I think compelling television but like now the reason you've got people here is because the ship is sinking yeah so you're gonna have the same problem as something like a real housewives franchise which kind of started out in this innocent space of like housewives and friends and lots of money and travel and then turned into this garbage dumpster fire of toxic women literally fighting each other like I feel like in order to maintain the ratings we have now it's gonna have to stay dramatic which I think Cody is willing to do Mm -hmm. and so is Robin though she's gonna pretend that she doesn't like it right and it's gonna be the other wives who probably walk away at some point I don't think Janelle feels like she needs this no I mean she's gonna make money with her farm and living with Maddie and Caleb and she'll be fine and same with Christine she's got her own bullshit Mary's got her MLMs like Mm -hmm. they're gonna be fine but yeah I mean it might turn into like welcome to Plathville like this current season where it's everybody's gotten divorced and now we're just manufacturing bullshit Mm -hmm. that nobody wants to see yep Olivia speed dating introducing characters nobody cares about like literally no one cares so unless you're gonna give us real stuff or drama because everybody's addicted to drama Mm -hmm. and toxic trash then nobody's gonna want to watch yeah, I, I I like the direction it's going right now, though, because yeah. we're actually having some of the wives talk about the real shit. Mm-hmm. We're actually getting into Coyote Pass. We're getting into who's on the deed. We're getting into lawyers. This yes. is all the stuff we've been screaming about for years, Beatrice. Yes. So this is good. I'm just wondering if they're going to keep it up. I'm wondering if production is actually tapped in with what most of us want or if it's going to fall apart, you know, and get super boring and a lot of McKelty and Tony and twins and stuff. Oh and I don't care about God. you being there at the birth, Robin. I don't care oh about my that. God, it's probably going to be a lot of that. No. Yeah. We don't need that. But TLC has a history of mm-hmm. not giving a shit about their fans. Yeah. So We're they're still just going to do whatever so they want to do. So why would they change it? Exactly. If they've got the highest ratings ever, why would they change anything exactly. in the formula? They wouldn't. Yep. But I foresee certainly a season 20 yep. and probably continuing to 21, 22, oh 25, honey. I For think real? They, I think we have a few years of them trying to cobble it together. I don't know if it's going to work, but they are going to try because it's a cash cow. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I can see up to 20, but then after that, I'm like... What are we doing here? What are we going to watch? I mean, I'm still going to watch, though. Yeah. That's the thing. <laughs> we're, we're all still watch. watching. We're still in the dumpster together. <laughs> like, we're still doing rewind episodes of I these know. boring-ass seasons. I so, know. like, we're still going to watch it. And people... That's, like, some of our most downloaded content on the audio podcast platform. Everyone like, loves everybody it. loves it. So, yeah. we're still talking about it. Yeah. So, we're still here, honey. So, I feel like if people are still going to talk about it, it's still going to go on. Yep. Even if it's going to be boring AF. Yep. 
One hundred percent. Good lord! But you know what's not boring? Mm. Christine is going to be suing <gasps> Cody Brown, bitch. <sighs> Oh, this I came love out it. last week. Yes, tell us. Well, Co- Christine is going to sue Cody, or is already suing Cody, for retroactive child support. Up to four years. And custody. Yes. Of Truly. So probably full custody, I'm assuming. Yes. Yeah, which I love. I love it as well. She's fully entitled to it. Uh-huh. They're probably going to have to do some kind of a paternity test because I don't think that's customary in polygamous families. Right. He's obviously the father. All of those kids look the same. <laughs> yeah. And he's going to be on the hook based on what he makes. And if this goes to, say, trial, <laughs> and if we have something like discovery and even depositions, and we're going to go on record, we're going to be able to see some of the financials, mm-hmm. unless they keep it private. I don't know if they can. I'm not a lawyer. But hopefully, Cody has some intelligence, and he's like, okay, let's just settle this. I'll agree yep. to whatever. But she's entitled to it. And I think it's very interesting that she waited until Truly was 14 to do it because that is the age of uh i don't what do you call it agency i don't want to say consent because that's not the right thing she can choose where she lives and what parent she spends her time with that is so truly can choose to stay with christine he can't use visitation and custody in that way to hang over christine's head Ooh, so she did it on purpose like that because he would have fought it in court if she did it earlier than this because then he would have been like oh she's um withholding custody of truly like she's the evil person like i shouldn't have to pay child support but now it's different now you do have to well pay custody child support. interestingly is not attached to visitation those are separate things sometimes people try to make it an issue mm-hmm. but no even if you never see your kid you are still on the hook to pay for that kid yep but he would have probably tried to do something manipulative like okay well i want to see Trudy, 50% of the time. Yes. And so, Trudy, truly, (laughs) 15% of the time. And so, Christine, you're going to have to drive your happy ass from Salt Lake City to Flagstaff twice a month. I'll do it twice a month. And she's going to have to stay here and maybe go to school here. He would have tried to do something like that. Definitely. So that's why she waited. And she was smart to do so. I love to see it. And I hope she gets a lot of money in child support. Because it's not like she's itching for money. It's not like she's poor Mm -hmm. she's successful she's just doing this just to get at cody for all of the years he's robbed all of the wives Mm -hmm. with their mcmansion and the weird figurines the assets or as maddie says the assets my god and robin's kids cars right yeah the fleet of cars that (laughs) belong to robin and her children oh my god yeah i think it's really interesting also that it's dropping kind of at the same time that we have on the television janelle talking about lawyering up and having this stuff kind of in the atmosphere i love to see it me too i want more of it me too and even if she doesn't need the money technically she can just put that right into a college fund right into any kind of fund that truly can draw from once she's 18 because you know Cody's not going to be supporting her. We know Cody doesn't give a crap about Truly. No, not at all. He went to go make out with Robin when she was getting bored. Yes. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Well, and last week at the Sprinkle, he's playing with Avalon, and he's not even acknowledging Truly. Yeah. His daughter sitting right there on the couch. Yeah, she's just sitting there staring yes. off into space Very while sad. her dad doesn't give a shit. Make him pay. Yes. Drag him. Drag him into Drag the Cody Brown. Brown. It's about damn time. For real. Let's go. Justice. Indeed. Yeah, Lizzo. All right. So let's get into the episode. Again, season 19, episode two entitled Let There Be Light. Yes. Interesting title. Yes. It starts off pretty strong because we get right into the Coyote Pass discussion. And it's with Janelle and Maddie because they're heading up to Montana to go look at property. And they're in the car talking about coyote pass and how it needs to be paid off because apparently they still haven't paid it off i mean this is 2022 right right now so (laughs) we already know it's been paid off but um they're talking about cody dragging his feet essentially like he's not prioritizing it he doesn't really give a shit he's not talking to janelle about it she wants it paid off so she can be done and free Mm -hmm. from him which is fair yes 100 percent. and apparently according to janelle cody is not just dragging his feet 
and not doing anything to pay it off, but he's also not communicating with her Mm -hmm. and telling her what the status of the property is and what the plan, the overarching plan to pay off the properties are. Like he's just not doing it. And then we have that lovely interstitial of him saying, yeah, well, I don't talk to her about the property because that's just information for the gossip mill, which I think is him saying that Janelle will tell Maddie. Mm -hmm. I think it's kind of coming out and it's becoming clearer and clearer that Cody thinks Maddie is a problem. Yeah. And she's kind of one of those kids who feels superior, who's in a club and who is gossiping all the time about him and Robin. So he doesn't want to talk to Janelle because Janelle's going to talk to Maddie and then the rest of the kids are going to hear about what his plans are financially. And that's so fucked up. And I think that shows his financial abuse because he's, you're not the sole owner of this property. Mm. Like Janelle's name is on this shit. So you don't, you don't get to do that, my Mm -hmm. guy, just because you're worried about your adult child who's like, I don't know, 30 or something. Heading toward, uh, yeah. Something like that. Like who gives a shit what she says about you? Maybe be a better person. Well, I would give a shit if I knew that one of my children was a hound dog who was pissed off about her mother getting the short end of the stick and un- and having her know about my financial situation and know about all the art and all the uh, phoenixes rising and <laughs> bears that are hugging and crystal towers and Dickensian villages. Like Maddie already knows about that mm-hmm. because as they're in the car, Janelle talks about how Cody has been storing assets, yes, trailers, and then of course this artwork. She actually calls out the artwork and they include it in the episode, which I love because of course... Cody and Robin have just put up their house. We saw a little bit of that artwork. So obviously the kids are seeing this too. The wives are seeing this. And Janelle says something like, it was my kids who were getting pissed off, my adult children. And when I finally began to see, oh yeah, this isn't fair, it was because of my kids. Yes. She even talks about like, looking back through all the years and how she would be stuck in a rental or she'd be having to get used stuff or used furniture or whatever. Meanwhile, Robin's backyard is fully finished and Robin's got all this artwork and her house is bigger and it's nicer. And she'd be like, huh, that's weird. Mm -hmm. I think Janelle was in denial for a long time because she didn't want to think that this guy she had trusted for 30 years or whatever would do something so heinous, but he has been doing it this entire time. Yeah. And that kind of leads me to this question that I have about Janelle because she's often referred to like the record keeper and the financially astute wife and the one who's bookkeeping everything and sees all the numbers and like does the taxes and stuff like that. But Janelle, why did you set yourself up to walk away with nothing? Because at this point, as she's having this conversation with Maddie, Cody could conceivably make the choice not to pay anything further on the property on his end. And anything she put toward it would just go away because yeah. that owner, that ultimate owner who creatively financed it said, look, you've got a balloon payment. If you don't pay it, you don't get anything. Right. So Janelle not just loses the property, but any money that she's put toward the property because he has all the power. Janelle. How did this happen? And what I think it is, is it's her faith. Yep. And I think it's the fact that she trusted her faith, her religion, and how Cody was framed within that to trust that he would never hurt her or her children. And so it was hard for her to actually see what her kids could see as they got older, that it was unfair. Polygamy is unfair to women, and she was getting the short end of the stick. But you're not that smart. I mean, I believe things that are kooky. Yeah. (laughs) My, My faith is a little weird, but I mean, I can also look at a ledger. I can also look at an account. I can also see where the money is going out of the family LLC and where it's going to. And she has said in previous seasons, I see where it goes. Yeah. Do you really need all that stuff? Really? I can't have a casita, but you can have the Dickensian village. Why did she do it? I don't get it. Other than the faith part. But even then, it doesn't make sense to me, Beatrice. I don't know. I I look at her and I'm like, maybe it's because she was easily manipulated because of the faith. Because like, Mary had her own separate money, but Mary was still stupid and like, really crazy loyal to Cody for over a decade when he didn't give a shit about her. Christine was loyal until the point where he cut off all intimacy. It was like, we're not going to have a marriage. And then she's like, 
okay, bye, I'm mm-hmm. done. But she still had separate finances. But like Janelle, I feel like was the one Cody was able to manipulate the most and be like, no, like it's for the greater good. Like this would be really fair for the family if like you could help us out with that. And if you could maybe convince one of the other wives or something to help us with this or whatever, like, can you do that? Can you move things around? Like, I think she was just coerced into it i think janelle believed in the big picture of polygamy yeah according to her faith i think mary believed in the love that she had with cody Mm. a little bit different i don't know if mary ever really believed with her whole body and soul um in polygamy i think she was jealous a lot and in this episode cody gets into mary's like constant anger and how it was distributed through the relationships but like she was in love with cody janelle was in love with the faith Mm, that's the difference yeah Yeah. i think that's the difference and i guess when christine decides to get a divorce she also decides to chuck her faith she no longer believes i don't know if that's no longer believes in fundamentalist mormonism or aub mormonism whether that means she's no longer even LDS, because I do see liquor in those cabinets, honey. Yeah, so girl. she's drinking, which Mormons aren't supposed to do, mm-hmm. but she is. Like, maybe it was easier for her to say, yeah, I don't believe anymore. And so this marriage doesn't mean anything. I'm divorced. That's what I would do. But I'd not be Janelle. like, fuck all this. Well, not Janelle and not Mary. Mary yeah. even talks about it, too. She still believes in the faith, which I'm just like, why? I don't understand. But, you know. I don't know either, but now she's going to be pursuing what she calls a release, which is a dissolution or a, it's, I don't, it's a spiritual divorce. Yeah. And when she brought that to Cody, he was like resistant, not because he doesn't want that, but because he doesn't want to have to go to the elders and have them look at his relationships and all the failures. And I'm skipping ahead and I apologize. But like, that's how Mary wants to deal with it. She yep. wants it to be final and church ordained. Janelle doesn't need it to be church ordained. But she also needs to go through her own process. Well, and that's what doesn't make any sense to me. Like, if you believe in the faith, why wouldn't you go and get a spiritual yeah. release? Because Mary still believes in the faith, and she's doing the spiritual release because she does not want to be sealed to eternity on Kolob with Cody fucking Brown. Right. But Janelle still believes in it, doesn't want to get the spiritual release, won't even call it a divorce. Mm-hmm. So then I'm like, okay, by your belief, by your faith system, you are going to be internal eternally sealed to cody brown Mm -hmm. in heaven with colob or on colob but if she's open to polygamy with another husband wouldn't she have to get released from this marriage in order to enter into that marriage like at some point she's going to have to get that release well i don't know because i've talked to ethel about that and like ethel's not fundamentalist mormon but she was lds and she said like i guess for the women like you're still sealed to multiple partners like you oh. still have to ask for the sealment or the unsealment or whatever if you wanted that but otherwise you're still sealed to cody brown and sealed to this other guy oh okay so when warren jeffs comes into some man's home and says your wife is now my wife they don't have to unseal that and do all the administrative stuff they just move the wife over to another husband and it's just fine in the I eyes guess. of the lord must be nice to be a white man yeah i guess must yeah be nice to be a white mormon man yeah wow yeah wow 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 isn't that crazy yes okay so that makes sense yeah that's why janelle doesn't feel the need to do it but that's weird why wouldn't you want to be unsealed from him like i would be i'd be like fuck you i'll spend eternity alone i just don't think she wants to fuck with it She doesn't want to talk about it. She doesn't want to have a conversation with Cody. She doesn't need to say it's over. She's just like, I'm moving on. I have a dream. I want to be with my kids. I want to have a piece of land. I want to be rural. I want to have a pig, a cow, and a garden. Fuck Cody. I don't care. And Mm. I actually like that more for her because now Mary has to go to the AUB, I guess, to the white male elders in that faith. And she has to plead her case for some kind of a release. And like, why? Why? Yeah, but I mean, if you believe in the faith, then you believe in that. But like, it sounds idea. like it's a lot. It sounds like it's a whole thing. It and is a Janelle's whole thing. And Janelle's like, I don't want to do it. So no, thank you. She's a Taurus. I get it. I really well, relate to Janelle. And maybe she is kind of a rug sweeper a little mm-hmm. bit. I think so. Yeah. Oh, God, So, yes. I mean, yes. maybe she just doesn't want to deal with it. Just go and buy your flower farm. Yep. And that's fine. Like, I'm not judging her for that. It's just like, if you're going to say you believe in the faith, then why aren't you going the full mile? You know yeah. what I mean? Yep. Fair. That's my only criticism. Fair. But back to the coins on Coyote Pass, when we we're talking about the separation of assets and how Cody and Robin kept their stuff very separate. Robin has her own separate money. Girl, can we all just download about that? Girl. First of all, 
when Robin is talking about how um, she used to be a bad budgeter, like I'm bad with money, <laughs> but yeah, now I'm know. really good with it. Uh-huh. And we actually have separate accounts, Cody and I, and I take care of, I have my own money. He has his own money. When mm-hmm. she was talking all of that mad duplicitous shit she was actually breathless i was noticing her body language like she had a little flush in her cheeks she was speaking a little fast and she was trying to catch her breath i mean just all indicators that she is bold face lying i cannot believe i cannot believe the audacity of this woman because she knows that she's lying oh yeah she knows that we know that she's lying she knows her wives are watching this and they know that she's lying and she's still doing it that's what makes her wicked Beatrice yes not just like stupid not just opportunistic she's wicked yes fucking evil when she was saying like it would be too confusing to have to calculate how much money the other wives gave to her and Cody essentially and have to figure that out so and pay it all back I don't know I mean how does somebody confused. even do that I, I don't even know get it it's easy honey it's easy how much did Janelle transfer from her account into your account how mm-hmm. much did Mary transfer into your account so you could buy that home yep and then the most evil comment to me that she made was the fact that she was saying the other wives didn't prioritize their money the way that she prioritized mm-hmm. her money she had different priorities she's an expert budgeter So yeah, it's your fault. You didn't prioritize your money well enough. But that's okay. We're just different in that way. Listen, bitch. Bitch. You've got Cody who's got his TLC salary and he doesn't work. Mm -hmm. You've got your TLC salary and you don't work. And so maybe you guys get to separate those two salaries and you've got your own account, Robin. But who's paying the mortgage? I bet it's Cody. Who's paying for the insurance? I bet it's Cody. Who's paying for all the utilities and groceries? I bet it's Cody. And is Cody doing that for his other wives, though? Mm-mm. Is Cody paying Janelle's mortgage? No. Is Cody paying Christine's or Mary's mortgage or groceries or utilities? I feel like those, women's were t- those women were taking care of their own household, which Cody actually says in this episode, while he was taking care of your household, yep. which then allows you to take your TLC salary and invest in Dickensian and villages and bullshit and Rolex watches mm-hmm. and gold jewelry and all manner of assets, trailers and otherwise, giving you a profound leg up. How is that confusing to you, bitch? And how is that fair? When the other wives were talking about struggling to feed their kids and pay their fucking bills. When we were watching season five and Christine's like, oh, I forgot to pay the water bill. Like, I missed that because she's the one running her entire household. Meanwhile, you're over there in your diesel jeans, sucking Cody's dick, doing nothing. Break dancing too close to the sun, Beatrice. <laughs> It's yes. just, it's 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 got to be falling apart, right, guys? Like, they can't actually be moving into a $4 million no house. Like, way. how would they be able to afford that? No fucking way. They don't have way. sponsorship deals. They don't no. have brand deals. They're not on, on IG, well, like, making money, right? I know they have a cameo. They have a cameo. <laughs> they have a cameo, but, like, how much <laughs> money does that actually bring in? Mm-hmm. They are living off of... TLC and whatever gun business or online business they have in the background, which I I would love. Oh my God, I would Please. love to see the taxes. Please. I would love to see the taxes. And if we have to go to trial because Christine needs to open the books to see how much Cody owes her for child support, like maybe we'll see the taxes. Oh my God. Wouldn't it be great? What's Honey? that lady on YouTube? I forget her name with the glasses that covered the Amber Heard trial. The lawyer. Oh, Emily D. Yes. Baker, yeah. Wouldn't it be so great if they went to trial and they got to cover us up? Please. (laughs) Put it on the vision board. Put it on the vision board. Put it on the vision board. Oh, that would be so good. But the but the terrible lying that Robin is doing here is just so awful to me. It's really, really bad. Nobody believes you, Robin. How can you sit there in the McMansion with all that shit everywhere? And we saw, like, in previous seasons when they were having their um, trick-or-treat during COVID and she's opening the door to give candy, like, all of the boxes of Amazon and this and that and all of the stuff they have. Yep. How can you say that with a straight face? It's crazy Wicked. to me. When she calls herself the idiot that still believes in this dream like she's saying i could still be neighbors with janelle i could still be neighbors with mary i hope they still build on coyote pass that would be so great that my dream would be fulfilled it's like 
you really want us to believe that? Yeah, no, no, you don't. You really want us to believe that you're telling the truth right now? Like, it's crazy. Why mm-hmm. don't you just say the fucking truth? It would be so much better. I mean... I mean, then we could start to find a way to maybe try and respect some of the decisions that you're making, yep. trying to hold on to your assets because of something you were told by Cody or whatever. Maybe it's because of trauma that you've come out of because you're mother was also in polygamy i don't know but like why don't you tell the truth just instead of just bold face lying yet wild yeah it's crazy and then we kind of hear more about um cody's relationship with maddie or lack thereof because while they're going maddie and janelle are going up to montana janelle in her talking head is like yeah cody doesn't really have a relationship with maddie and then we hear cody on and on about the gossip mill and how he doesn't trust janelle doesn't trust maddie and it's a two-way street though she doesn't reach out to me so therefore i won't reach out to her and i know that triggers you yeah it pisses me off yeah and 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 i'm i'm not triggered by it because i've that's never happened to me yeah but i know as a, a child of divorce and hearing a parent tell you that well your the phone goes both ways or something like that why don't you speak to it yeah should we go uncensored for it sure okay let's come back to the regular pod we were actually for a while we were talking on yeah. uncensored if you guys want to hear all of the uncensored bits all you have to do is go to reality tv cringe on patreon subscribe it's only for patrons yeah but um what was i saying <laughs> cody triggering me about the yeah the two-way street bullshit that he's giving with Maddie. Right. And the thing I was saying was that even though Maddie is an adult, even though she's almost 30 years old, Cody is always going to be the parent. Yes. And even though it might be difficult, it's still his responsibility to initiate any kind of a healing process with Maddie and his other children. They might be upset. They might be no contact. But it's up to you to mm-hmm. try and make a bridge so that everybody can heal. Because that's just the job. Yep. They didn't ask to be born into this world. They certainly didn't ask to be born into this polygamous family. You brought them into this experience. And so you are the caretaker of the experience. And if you don't like that, because it doesn't feel good for you now that you're 54 with your new nubile breakdancing wife, <laughs> then that's your fault. Exactly. At least accept that. This yep. broke down because of me. Stop putting it back on your kids. But he fucking can't accept any responsibility. It's so frustrating to me because I'm like, you are a an adult of a certain age, a big age, mm-hmm. and you are still acting like this. Like, what are you going to do on your deathbed? He's going to be one of those guys that as he gets older, he's just going to become more and more crotchety, mm-hmm. push everybody in his family away, mm-hmm. and then wonder why he dies alone. He's going to be that guy. Mm -hmm. I I swear. It pisses me off so much. Well, and or Robin will be there and her kids will be there and that'll be enough for him because he will be so estranged from the rest of his family. But that's going out sad. Yeah, definitely. It's going out sad. Yep, it is. And he talks about how the time in Vegas with with Maddie and Caleb living with them in the four plots in the cul-de-sac was the best time of his life Mm -hmm. and how he loved Caleb. Caleb and he loved having his family all together and I'm like then why don't you lean into that because if you lean into the love of your whole entire family you could heal a lot of the relationships you have that you've broken it would take just an apology (laughs) and an acknowledgement ownership like I really fucked that up yeah and here's my thinking behind what I did and this is why it was wrong you know here's how I came to the realization that it is wrong and here's my plan to do things differently and change the situation going forward like take actual responsibility but he's a narcissist Mm -hmm. we can't keep expecting narcissists to have this kind of an awareness they just don't right you can't take a narcissist to therapy because they will weaponize therapized words and therapy processes and then use it against you to make you even more miserable they're broken people and i'm sorry i just think there's like no help for people like this yeah there's no hoping he's going to get better because you're right he's going to get worse with age yep i was just watching this episode i'm like every single one of you needs to be in therapy mary go to conventional therapy not mormon therapy not therapy with your spiritual elders 
get an actual conventional therapist and dedicate yourself to years of therapy. Please. Janelle, you too. Yep. I mean, you're pretty well adjusted. You seem to be happy and okay, as you were telling Christine, but you also need therapy because how did you get here in the first place? Yep. How did you make such a series of disastrous choices to get you and to hurt your children the way that you did? Yep. We don't talk about that enough with Janelle. We really you hurt don't. your children. Garrison was a hurt child. Of course. And I'm not trying to speak like make anybody feel bad but like there are things that you did for reasons that you are unconscious to that allowed you to hurt these kids and this allow this man to hurt your kids right go to therapy yeah and christine honey girl i know you're happy you're in your honeymoon era dicking down but you need therapy too uh-huh everybody does the only person who would not benefit from therapy in my opinion is cody and robin and because robin. they're actually they, to me, and I'm not a doctor, they strike me as actual narcissists. Yes. Yeah. When you've got Robin sitting on the couch lying like oh that God. to our faces, our raccoon faces. Yeah. Like, yeah, there, uh, there's no hope for her. Yeah, there Wicked. really isn't. Unless she comes out and is like, yeah, I'm going to leave Cody too. I realize he's a piece of shit. Yeah, and I was lying all these years. I was yeah. trying to make it work and trying to get everybody to believe us so we could abused. have a TV because yeah. I didn't have any money. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Then we would be fine with you. But even that's calculated. Yeah. Because <laughs> you should have done that at the right time. True. But she's not. And then we have Christine visiting Janelle and Flagstaff. This was interesting. This was really good. Like, listen, I know a lot of people love Christine. Oh, she's annoying. And we love that Christine left Cody and so deeply broke him. Mm -hmm. I mean, the reason we oh, have yeah. the spinning top that is Cody Brown just being an awful person is because Christine felt empowered enough to walk away from him. Yes. But that doesn't negate that she's annoying as fuck. Mm -hmm. She's judgmental to Janelle. Yeah. She has her own ideas of the way that the world should work. And I guess now that she's no longer the biggest advocate for polygamy and the biggest advocate for the AUB, now all of a sudden everybody else has to have the same opinion and in the same timeline. She's ridiculous. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> break down the break down the scene for me but she was so annoying to me oh yeah i was actually talking to ethel about it because she was so mad at christine she's like can you just lay off of janelle like please why are you trying to tell her what to do like let janelle make her own decisions and i was talking to ethel about it i'm like it's the aries in christine like the the ram just being so fucking pushy and just being like let me tell you how to do your life. Let me tell you how to fix your life. And I was talking to Ethel about it. I'm like, that's a fire sign thing mm -hmm. <laughs> because I feel like we're kind of hot headed people and we just want to tell people how to live their lives, even though we don't know what the fuck we're talking mm -hmm. about most of the time. And we also don't live our lives by our own advice a lot of the time. So yeah, yeah. it's like Christine trying to tell Janelle how to break up with Cody and how to separate all of her assets when Janelle's finances are fucking entangled so much more than everyone else. Like Christine... You got to sell your house and leave. Yep. You had nothing tying yourself. Like you got rid of Coyote Pass and you were done. It was clean. Janelle can't do that. And Janelle's trying to figure it all out. So let her just figure it out. It's 2022, winter of. Yeah. Like Christine, you just walked away, I think, September of 2022. Uh, right. Based on that timeline. So it's been a few months. You don't have all the answers. This no. is what kills me yes. about these women, the Mary Browns, the hashtag worthy ups, these, these women who have clear and present problems olivia plath olivia plath and christine you have clear and present problems and mm -hmm. you presume to sit on a couch and tell janelle how to be in her own process it's just so self-absorbed and yep. so tone deaf but that's just christine yep. that's also mckelty it must have been like the family she came up on uh, came up in by the end of this episode we have her telling us that she gets it now <laughs> but i don't think she gets it i think no. she's actually really judgmental and to the degree that Cody and Robin believe there's a gossip mill. I'm going to tell you, Christine's right in the center of that gossip mill. Totally. She loves to make television talking about Cody Brown yep. and all of the things that he's done wrong. Yep. Having the whole family there, even the kids talking about Robin. Like she lives for that shit. Totally. But also, like Janelle said to Cody in her talking head, like Cody leaks like a sieve. Mm -hmm. He's also gossiping and saying shit to True. the other wives about the other wives. So like everybody talks about everybody in this family, mm -hmm. which to some degree is normal in a big giant sure. family like this. I mean, everybody's talking crap, of course, of course. But when a lot of it is true, like with the stuff about Cody and Robin, like it's not gossip. Mm -hmm. They're just bitching about the fact that you guys are pieces of crap. Right. But like Christine is totally at the head of it. And Christine 
needs to chill out Mm -hmm. and just let people figure it out on their own. Yeah, it just doesn't work. It's not going to work with a personality like Janelle, Mm -hmm. who is so in her own body, honey. Yes. She's so in her own life. She's Mm -hmm. so in her own purpose and vision. Like she's she's getting it together. She's trying to figure out right now what it is she wants exactly. She loves Flagstaff, but eh, I probably shouldn't hang out here because Cody and Robin are here. And I also love Montana and I love Cody and uh, not Cody, but Caleb and Maddie. And so there's a lot of different things at play right now. So just give me a little space and breath and time, Christine, um, before Thanksgiving. Jesus Please. Christ, for me to figure that out for myself without you telling me what to do. That's just not who she is. I can see that clear as day. And it, it's kind of wild to me that Christine doesn't understand that about her and or is such a boundary stomper. Yeah. And it's like I can understand to an extent why Christine is so fired up about it because she is single. She's fucking David Woolley probably at this point or dating him or something. I don't know. I don't care. But like she's happy and like she wants to have Janelle be happy. And so I I understand the sentiment. But like again, like just... Mm -hmm take it down a few notches yeah there's just an essential immaturity with christine yes. i remember being like a know-it-all when i was in my 20s and stuff yeah, right. but like christine you're in your 50s for real and your life is a shit show yeah. your life is an actual <laughs> yeah. shit show on tlc yeah so like don't presume to tell anybody else what they need to do and the pace that they need to move at that's just not how we want to do it yeah but she's probably doing all of her interviews at this time like all of the stuff's probably been filmed so she's like on a high right oh, yeah. now and so she's like i'm the shit everybody else needs to come on my level you right. know yeah but it's annoying yeah but um janelle's kind of talking to christine about like cody and coyote pass and how he's not talking to her and she, like all of their stuff is over text and so she needs to get a lawyer and she's tired of this wishy-washy bullshit or no cody says that cody says that he's annoyed with janelle because she's going back and forth with him and it's very ambiguous amb- ambiguous yeah ambiguous and um he's frustrated with it and this is where mary starts laughing Mm -hmm. yes i loved it oh this was so good she's like yeah so the thing that you're frustrated janelle's doing to you you did the same bullshit to me karma's a bitch which is wonderful and true but also can we just get real mary (laughs) if we all knew you know watching 40 minutes a week for i don't know 15 episodes Uh. a year if we all knew that Cody wanted nothing to do with you if we felt as an audience that it was loud and clear his intent with you how come you didn't and again it's probably the faith and again it's probably her prioritizing her perception of her love relationship with Cody and Mm -hmm. how much she wanted to get back to that but at the same time like you weren't a victim necessarily like you had a whole banana in your mouth in a bathtub (laughs) talking to a man that i know you would have left if he was a real man we all know you would have left you were ready to leave when you were in alaska Uh uh-huh okay you sat down to that dinner in alaska and you were ready to tell them look I'm, i'm on my way out the door so it's not like this whole thing was done to you you were complicit in it yeah but at the same time any opportunity she takes a pot shot at Cody, oh, I love it. And her so reveling good. in how uncomfortable Janelle's lack of communication makes him. Like, I live for that. Yep. Anything that pokes him, I endorse. I love it. And it, it is totally the same kind of energy as Christine, though. Like, now that you're away from it and you're doing your hashtag worthy up, like, you think you're better than everybody right. when you're, like, a, also a huge mess. Mm-hmm. But um, I thought that was such a good comment. And I want more of that from Mary all season. That Me too. That would be so so good but i will say though cody did admit later in some talking head where he had said he was trying to make their relationship work when he was talking about mary yes getting her spiritual divorce or whatever he admitted to it he's like yeah i tried to tell her in flagstaff maybe it'll be a new beginning and like i tried really hard so he's saying on camera that he was going back and forth with mary Yes, and sending mixed messages. But at the same time that he's saying that, he's like, I tried to be curious, but she wasn't fun. Yeah, she was She boring. wasn't good to be around. She's an angry person. And I'm just like, God, the way he so glibly just puts her down mm-hmm. and decimates her like as a woman is so sad to see. Like he doesn't think twice about saying something that is going to break her heart. And yep. just last week she's talking to her friend Brandy and she's like, I don't, I want to take the high road. I want to be kind. And here he is just being so despicable to her. Now, 
when he's talking about this, though, Beatrice, we kind of get into some of the history and some of the lore about Mary and Cody. Yeah. And remember how, you know, over the pod, like probably over the last year, I was talking a little bit about that therapy set that therapy session that Cody went in with Mary and how he talked about like how he didn't know the baggage that Mary brought into the relationship. And there were things he didn't know about Mary that he wished he would have known. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I wish he would have elaborated on that. Well, now I think this is starting to come out. And it's the fact that Mary brought her toxic anger into the relationship and Cody tells a story about like offering her a piece of gum and she snaps at him and says you know I don't like spearmint and you know what I believe it yeah I I believe it and then he talks about how Janelle entered into the relationship and that diluted his relationship with Mary and his exposure really to her anger Mm -hmm. so Janelle becomes a meat shield So he doesn't have to be Mm -hmm. the sole beneficiary of all of Mary's toxicity. Mm -hmm. And so now we have problems with Mary and Janelle. And Janelle actually leaves at one point and moves back to Wyoming or whatever. Yeah. And then we bring on Christine. And Cody actually admits that bringing Christine on saved the the relationships. Yeah. It was because Christine came. It diluted Mary even more. So now she had not just one focal point, which is Cody. Now she's got three adults that she can spread her misery around and then a bunch of kids that some of these kids say she went on to abuse. So I actually believe this about Mary. Yeah. And maybe the baggage he's talking about is like her family, her trauma, her family, toxic culture. I don't know. But I thought that was really interesting to learn about. Yeah, I thought it was interesting. But I do think he's saying all of that just to make her look bad. But then at the same time, like we see the fact that Christine and Janelle don't really have a relationship with Mary there's obviously a reason why, because Mary's seems like a big old bitch. Maybe everybody's like over be. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe she's better now with her hashtag worthy up and stuff. Who fucking knows? But it doesn't change like 30 years of her being toxic and terrible. But then I'm like, at the same time when he's talking about Mary's baggage, I'm like, what about your baggage, dude? Oh, like, what about you being a piece of shit? Like, I know you're, you've been exceptionally terrible the last like... 10 years or so but i feel like you weren't a peach back then either i feel like you were also pretty terrible and you were a 20 something dude who thought that being in a terrible relationship with the first girl oh you know what the solution would be let's bring in another woman oh that doesn't work okay let's bring in another woman and then 30 years later say you don't love any of them Mm -hmm. and maybe that's true like maybe you didn't love any of them from the get-go because that's not true you were dumb and brought in these women to think it would make everything better but i don't don't fucking believe that nobody believes that i I believe he fell out of love with them yeah but i believed at one point he did love them yeah yeah, no he's he's not a peach i think he was dealing with a woman who had some personality issues that would be mary and i think mary took it out on janelle we have scenes in flagstaff so recent scenes where they're trying to work out their relationship but janelle has been so injured in this relationship it's like i don't i don't know if i have the bandwidth mary to even try to go to therapy with you because true of the shit that I have been through with you. So Mary sounds like she was a pretty terrible person. Yeah. And at some point, probably about 10 years ago, when this whole thing started, Cody's like, I'm done. I've got this, I've got this new woman. Yeah. I love her. I actually feel what real love feels like. And maybe he did. Maybe. And so maybe that's a revelation to him. And he slowly but surely starts falling out of love with the others. But Mary, you had something to do with that. Yeah, 100%. And then we have Cody talking about how he's not a victim. But he never had a choice to leave these women because of his faith. But then he says he doesn't want to disparage his faith, but then calls it bullshit. Right. You can't have it both ways. Like, why are you keep going back and forth, man? When did you... I want to know, when did you walk away from the faith? Because it's convenient for you to say, well, my faith says I can't divorce them. They have to make the choice. And then out of the other side of your mouth say, well, but my faith is bullshit. Right. It's like, which one is it? It's what's convenient for you Mm -hmm. to make you look less like an evil person or the evil person that you are. So everything is so convenient for him. And then again, like you're not taking any accountability because you're saying the OG three wives kicked you out. Right. As if you weren't trying to get the fuck out of there. Mm -hmm. Then he says something really weird where he's like, I never would have left any of them even though i don't love them anymore i never would have left them but they made a choice 
they wanted to leave. And so everybody made choices. I guess I maybe made some choices that maybe have separated all maybe. of us. Maybe I did. Maybe. I don't know. Probably not. But not really, though. Yeah. I'm not a victim, though. But I got kicked out of my club. I'm excommunicated from my club that I started. I don't even understand how he arranges and organizes his life in the way that he sees it. It doesn't make any sense. I think he's referring to Mary kicking him out of the house in Vegas during the whole catfish debacle for a period of time, probably because he was never really coming around and hated her guts in the first place. And so because she needed a little bit of space from him, he took that as she kicked me out. Now I don't ever have to see her again. Yeah. And then, of course, Christine does the same thing because she gets to the end of her rope because they're not fucking anymore and he's not giving her any attention whatsoever much less her kids and then with Janelle it took longer because she was holding on because she believed in the vision until maybe that fight at Christmas yeah and she's like well then fuck you and he takes that as her telling him that he can't be with her anymore I don't remember a time Janelle ever said get out of my house no except for that big fight at Christmas last season well, but like, he was walking out. out of his... Exactly. He was like, no, I'm not going to talk to you. And he's walking out of the, the place on his own. So it's just, again, it's all very convenient for him. Yeah, because he can't he's take any He's a terrible person. Yep. And I hate him We do so not much. prefer him. So much. And then we have like more in the conversation with Christine and Janelle about Thanksgiving plans, like holiday plans. Janelle's like, I'm never coordinating a, ho- a holiday with Cody ever again, which we love. Mm-hmm. This is where Cody's like, I'm kicked out. I have FOMO. I, I, I want to be included, but nobody it's wants my to include club, me. But I got kicked out of it. Okay. Fuck you. You removed yourself from your other families. Yep. You did that. You made those choices. But I mean, like, let's not split hairs, I guess. Yeah, I guess. And then we talk about the Christmas text chat. Yes. Which we talked about last season, but we get more into it i guess because we hear from aurora Aurora, right and brianna yep who have clearly been coached brainwashed by their mother because their mother saw the feedback and the backlash from everybody when last season aurora said that they heard that they weren't a part of the family somebody had told them and everybody said including us well that must have been robin maybe it was mckelty And then Robin told them, but it was probably Robin. And so because everybody said that, Robin has taken pains, obviously to me, to tell her adult children, get into that couch and say that those kids told you directly that you weren't part of the family so that nobody thinks it was me. Yeah. That was the one that was telling you that. Yeah. And so they do their mother's bidding. And I had to fast forward through it. I was just like, these poor kids, Mm -hmm. they're adult kids kids but like have their brains formed at all uh no because your brain's not formed until you're 25 i don't know how old aurora is though maybe she's 25 i don't fucking know but i'm like you can think for yourself Mm -hmm. but aurora is sitting there saying i've been told directly by multiple people on multiple different occasions that i was not accepted and that i was not their sister and i'm like by who though because wasn't it last season at Mm -hmm. isabel's party or Mm -hmm. whatever and you have all this footage of everybody hugging you guys and accepting you into the family and you guys were happy and talking to everyone and it was you know what i think it is i think it's like season three season four when Peyton was being a bully with the kids when they're coming into the family i'm i mean i can see a world where Peyton may have said some bullshit to those girls because we could see him kind of doing that anyway so i can see when they were little kids there was maybe trouble with some of those kids but they obviously worked it out i also want to say last season or the season before i think it was gabe saying i think it was last season gabe was like yeah i see aurora at college and we stop or in school yes and we stop in the halls and we always talk with each other and i love her a lot and yes and i think she even talked spoke to that on the couch last season like yeah i do see gabe and it's good he's my brother like so what's changed then right like how did this happen you guys are spinning fucking yarns yep it's ridiculous. You're lying like your mom. Yep. And everybody can tell and you ought to stop. I know. But they're like, they're kids and they're under. She's not a kid. Well, but I know, but they're under the roof. No, And they're under their manipulation. Okay, but they're not kids. Well. So at some point. Yeah. You have to take responsibility if you're getting up on a couch and you're talking about these other adult children who tried to include you in the Christmas chat. Yeah. They were trying to include you. And then Robin inserted herself and said, let's get on a Zoom. And we're like, I can't get on a Zoom. I got a family. And then all it became a big deal. Yeah. Like, but they were including you then. Right. So getting on the couch and, and saying this is just, I, 
shameful. Yeah. And now it's shameful. Robin's saying on the couch here saying my kids felt emotionally unsafe. And I'm uh-huh. like, how? In so a text many, message? Yeah. Well, are you kidding me? This no. is the brainwashing though. And mm-hmm. like maybe Aurora and Brianna will wake up to it eventually. Like maybe when they move out of their house and they become their own people separate from Cody and Robin, like maybe they'll figure it out and get back in contact with the siblings because that can happen. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Right now it's just fucking frustrating to see it is. them. I don't, need, I don't need to see them. Yeah. yeah. We don't need to see the little flying monkeys that Robin is sending into the space in order to parrot her story. Nobody believes it. Yeah, and Christine even said truly didn't even know that these kids weren't biologically mm-hmm. her siblings. Yeah. Like, come on. Yep. You guys were included. Yes. It's bullshit. And then Cody saying some people in the family feel like they're superior. Mm-hmm. And is that just Maddie? I think it's Maddie. I, I, I know it's Maddie for sure, but I'm like, I wonder who else he's referring to. I don't think it's Logan. I don't think it's Hunter. I, I know it's not McKelty at this point. Um i don't know who it would be i don't know either like who are you referring to maybe aspen maybe the boys too from maybe the boys Boys. maybe the boys yeah god and who cares no i mean then heal it seriously Then there's a problem there's a breakdown you're the dad get in there do something about it how about we talk about it yeah let's get some fight about it for real uh with all that money you're siphoning off for the dickensian villages you could pay for family therapy yes you could good lord then we have the wives kind of discussing about Cody, like when he was around and when he wasn't around. And that's how the episode ends. Okay. Well, we'll just conclude it there. Yeah. Because I'm like, I don't care. Yeah, I don't care either. (laughs) (laughs) He wasn't there. Nobody cares. Except for Robin. Robin being like, yeah, I had to be independent. Well, but she was like, no, it wasn't different when he was there versus when he wasn't there. And I'm like, that's because he was always there. He was literally always there. He was always there, Robin. (laughs) Always. uh, Bitch so stupid and then we have a preview we have um the family oh yeah we didn't even talk about that there was an upcoming event yeah it's gwendolyn's engagement party is that what right it is? i think it's gwendolyn's engagement oh my god it's weird that they're not saying that though yeah like why are you being vague about it is it the engagement party it's not gwendolyn's marriage right i don't think so i don't know we'll see we'll see but yeah, so everybody's going to get together and nobody's talking to each other. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be really weird. And Cody says it's a civil war. Yeah. Where it's just him and Robin and then the rest of the family. Acting awkward with their weights and stuff. Yeah. And then McKelty might have to have a C-section and for her I'm twins. And I'm snoring. And she's crying about Who cares? it. And I'm like, I get don't give a shit. Get her off my television. For real. I'm sick of her. Go back to Patreon. Have enough with your mom. Oh my God. And then Robin planning to be there at the birth of her twins. Also don't care. Yeah. Don't Do not care. care. It's going to be awkward. All right. Guess what? I loved this episode. Me too. I go into every episode thinking I'm going to be triggered AF, and I am. Oh, yeah. Me like same. the entire time, I'm in a rage, honey. Same. Whew, my blood pressure. Girl. Where's my beta blockers? <laughs> For real. But I enjoyed it because we're starting to get into areas yeah. that I'm very curious about, namely the money. Yeah. And finally, we've got some wives calling shit out yes and i'd love to see it i love it as well Mm. well is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons before we get up on out of here beatrice well if you love our podcast i sure hope and pray to the mormon god on collab that you go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five star review it really helps us grow the pod and we really love to read them so thank you very much we will be back later this week to talk the mormon moms of mom talk secret lives of mormon wives we're also going to be catching up with welcome to plathville we are one week late on plathville sorry about that that. we record on a tuesday night and that's when it airs so we're a little late but we are going to get together and talk about it this week so make Make sure to come back for that. And until then, please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you. And peace out. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>